Uh, let's let's get your predictions before we yeah. end this thing. I mean, obviously we know where you're going to go with, but let's hear. Yeah. This and listen, and and this is no disrespect to anything to do with you or the Titans because. I got to tell you, every time I've been out to Nashville, um, I've absolutely loved it. And it's been an incredible time spending time with Titans fans when we go out there because they're usually very welcoming. I feel like when you're in a tourist town like that, you really don't have any other choice. I mean, there's so many people who pile (laughs) in. I will say, though, they let us have it after they won because all week we're dominating the bars, talking a ton of shit, you know. And then with that said, however... I just look at the Bills game last year versus the Titans, and I look at it this year, and I can't for the life of me anticipate that Derrick Henry has the type of game that he does last year with this revamped Mm D-line. With that, I think that that also takes away Ryan Tannehill's ability to get down the field like he was able to last year. And on top of that, this Bills offense almost – religiously at this point is guaranteed to put up a 30 plus game. Now, last year they did that against the Titans, but the defense just wasn't there. So this year, I just think that the revamp D line ultimately winds up making the difference here. And I just don't quite know if the Titans defense who, you know, they just got, like you'd mentioned, just not, not too far away from 300 rush yards allowed to the giants and Daniel Jones had an efficient day. It wasn't great by any means, but it was efficient. So I look at that, and I know I said earlier I don't put too much stake in the week one games, but if the Giants are capable of doing that, it makes you wonder what the Bills are going to be able to pull off. So the way I see it, I got 31-17 Bills. But I got to say, a spread like this one sitting at right now, 10 points, it always concerns me. That's a big number. And like I mentioned earlier, the Bills coming off a heavy win like that, riding the momentum, and the Titans want to come out not going 0-2. There's a lot there. And I like Brian, I, I mean, excuse me, I like Mike Vrabel a ton. I feel like he's going to be prepped up for this game. He sure as hell has been the last two times. So that's how I'm feeling. But at the same time, man, I also just came off that win against the Rams. I got the, I got this fuel in me. So, but that's where I stand right now. But at the same time, it would not shock me if, like you said, we, we see the Titans pull a Titans where they go out and lay an egg against the Giants. And this week we see a completely different team. Uh, all right. I, I see, I see 27, 24 Titans. And I just feel like if we game plan correctly, if we drag, if we keep Josh Allen and the offense without the ball, we drag it like how they, the Titans do run the ball, kill the clock, mm-hmm. milk it, milk it. I think there's a chance that we could see that score. We could see that win again, who knows what can happen. I mean, they could go out there and just lay a goose egg like they did before, or they come in like last year, like a team that, you know, we're like, what kind of team is this? So I just feel like with clock management, uh, keep Josh Allen on the sideline watching and have the defense show up when it needs to show up. We'll see what happens, but. uh, like It's a good point you make. And I look at it like if I'm the Titans in this game and I win the coin toss, I I want the ball first. Want the ball. I would think that if you, you, you have got to get out. If if the bills go up like 10, nothing early. No, that's it. That could be over. Exactly. The Titans have got to find a way to get an early lead or keep it close because they have to be able to run it. Exactly. Drag the ball. Totally agree. That's it. So.